Yes, so uh, yeah, indeed, I think it makes more sense to finish you to explain uh, the proof in, uh, in some easy case. And then Damian will explain uh, the, the subtleties uh, in the general case. So uh, I call you that the goal is to explain you the proof. Uh, this is the main idea of the proof of uh, pseudo Kobayashi. hyperbolicity of uh, sub-varieties of uh, general type. In abelian variety. So after uh, So yesterday I explained you a bit the, the story of the, some of the results and uh, the, the, the proof of the block OCI theorem that we've seen. <laughs> stating that uh, a being an abelian variety, then uh, the Zariski closure is uh, translate of uh, So the, the proof, uh, if you recall, uh, was uh, looking at uh, K jets, so in the setting of uh, the May sample jets. And the key point was that uh, due to the triviality of the tangent model of A, The K jet is a product, in fact, <laughs> of A times uh, universal variety, which appears. So, Frederic uh, asked me why uh, I denoted R this. This is just, I take, I think, the, the notation of the mail in his Santa Cruz notes. So, this is in interesting variety appearing as the fiber of his construction in, uh, of jet spaces. And so, the key point if you recall, was so to study inside AK, I have uh, the variety XK, which uh, by definition is uh, the Zariski closure of uh, the K definition. And uh, the important point was to study the property of uh, this map. So the restriction of the second projection to R and K. Yes? Frédéric, you have some? Yes. No, no, no. No, I just recall you the, the proof of the, the scheme of the proof. What we what we used to prove this was this uh, diagram. So you consider any entire curve. Okay. Uh, sorry. So this is just a notation. This is not the. Uh, what is the notation? Okay. okay. This is not the jet space. No, 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 no. This is why I said yesterday there could be a confusion. And. Uh, I, I say no, xk is by definition, the definition here is the Zariski closure of the uh, k lift, right? And then the key point was to study uh, this uh, 
uh, this uh, map, right? Restriction of second projection. And so there was a, like a dichotomy, if you remember, it was Uh, suppose uh, there exists some k where uh, k is uh, generically finite, or uh, <coughs> for every k, for k has a positive dimensional uh, generic fiber. This was the the key step of the proof. And if you recall, so this was uh, impossible because of the vanishing theorem, because you could pull back uh, jet differential from some, uh, some O1 here, which is relatively big. Right? So you can pull back, in this case, you can pull back from uh, RNK a jet differential uh, vanishing on an ample divisor, right? And so by the vanishing theorem, okay, this says that you will have a non-zero section here, but this is impossible by the vanishing theorem, right? So it says that in this setting, uh, this is not possible, so you are in this case. And out of this case, we prove by a notarian argument that uh, there was uh, a positive dimensional uh, stabilizer. Right. Okay, so, so just to recall you, because you will see that the scheme of proof of Yamanoi is uh, very similar to this. Although uh, it has to be uh, a bit refined. So, okay. So now the goal is to prove uh, is to prove a quantitative statement. So the goal, is, let's say here, is give a proof. of uh, Kobayashi hyperbolicity of X with empty special loci without using Brody. Because I, uh, as I explained you yesterday, uh, to, the, to give a proof in the pseudo case, you cannot use body. So it's already interesting to see a proof of this, a direct proof, without using body. And this is, in fact, a proof that will be uh, generalizable to the pseudo case. And this is what Yamanoi has. Okay, so the goal is to prove then. So I am in the city, so X and I want to prove that there is a bound on the derivative of any holomorphic map from D to the uh, that there exists a constant. Such that for any holomorphic map from uh, the disk to X, there is a bound with respect to the metric, canonical metric of the abelian variety. So, Okay, this will prove uh, Kobayashi hyperbolicity, right? 
Okay, so this is a, this is a, quali a quantitative statement. So we have to replace uh, the qualitative uh, uh, theorem that we've used into quantitative. And in fact, this is what Benoit introduced yesterday. The key uh, estimate is the tautological inequality. There is a difference between uh, what uh, Benoit explained us yesterday and what will be used here is that Benoit explained us the case of entire curve, okay, for the tautological inequality. Here we need one for disk. So this is, uh, I will give you the statement. The proof is uh, in fact essentially the same. That's just, uh, you have to uh, write some estimate. So let's call the, this uh, refined tautological inequality. So the setting is the same as, uh, so here I will not, I will use uh, this uh, space instead of the compactification that the uh, noise used. So suppose we have uh, a complex variety here with a metric so this induce a metric uh, on uh, the tautological bundle. Consider immediately the, the metric on the dual, and I will consider uh, theta its curvature. Okay, and so. Uh, the theorem is the following. So let uh, S between zero and one, epsilon positive, delta positive. Then uh, there exists a mu positive constant such that uh, for any holomorphic disk in X. So the characteristic uh, function written in this way so again uh, I use the, this uh, notation here So, uh, yes, so here, a difference that uh, can be seen, still not clear if it's really necessary, but the way Yaman <laughs> writes it is that here, he will not take the logarithmic average. So he will consider this. And you are, here you see the same uh, term that Benoit showed us yesterday. You have the log. Plus me. So here is, uh, is the estimate that one can prove really in the same fashion that uh, you look at the proof of Yaman. It's essentially a variant of what Benoit uh, explained us yesterday. But written in this particular <laughs> form, okay, I forgot to say that this is as usual true. Uh, so this is true only for all air as usual. outside E with a linear measure less uh, than delta. 
OK? Mu. So there exists a constant mu such that you have this sum of two terms plus mu. OK? So this is the tautological inequality that we use. So now we learn. use that to give estimate on the derivative of this. <laughs> okay, so Okay, so we do the same uh, the same diagram as you know, I erased it, but so we want to control so we'll go in uh, in this setting of jets. Okay. Here is the usual setting. And so now, suppose, so we'll do like a same uh, kind of dichotomy. So suppose that uh, there exists a K such that This time, uh, this is really finite. Not only generically, but really finite. Now, I recall you that uh, we can find from what I recall you yesterday, you can find integer so that you can make some twist of the tautological bundle ample, um, um, relatively ample. Um, Let's call this O of A is ample. Um, so this is one of the facts uh, that you can find in the maze not and uh, jet spaces that the O1 is relatively big and you can make it relatively ample, twisting by tautological from every stage. Okay, so this means that <laughs> under this uh, assumption of finiteness, you can pull back. Let's call this, this uh, LK and uh, is ample. Okay. So now you can uh, certainly find uh, some integer such that, so I will call uh, the curvature form of this LK theta K minus uh, p star of omega a, certainly you can find m such that this is positive, right? And now uh, you have the following estimate. So you just use uh, the tautological inequality. So you have that
this is less than the characteristic function of O of Y. And now you use them, uh, the tautological inequalities so that you can Okay, plus the three terms you have. Okay, omega n, theta of the two pi, uh, plus me. So I've just used the all the tautological inequalities. And so you immediately, uh, this is here, okay, this is, okay, here it's omega a. So you can make, you can choose an epsilon small such that you can take this term on the left and keep it positive. Okay. So you obtain immediately that there exists uh, some constant such that uh, you have this estimate. Uh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. I just used that. Yeah, you're, you're right. So I can really uh, find a constant here with this term on the left. And now there is a very nice observation, easy but uh, very useful, is that because of the particular form of the metric on a complex torus, uh, you have that uh, this function. Uh, is a subharmonic. Right? You recall the, uh, the, the expression of the form uh, of the metric on, uh, on uh, complex torus. So, you immediately obtain that uh, this term here. Mm -hmm. Average here is less than log plus <coughs> okay, you immediately obtain this inequality. So now you are uh, left with the following bound. is less than gamma one log plus of this. <coughs> plus gamma. Okay, so this certainly here, uh, it's an increasing uh, function. So you get that. <coughs>
Okay, is less than. Now you can choose in the, the tautological inequality some particular values, if you want. You can choose delta equal uh, to uh, 1 minus s over q. So this certainly imply that uh, there exists some r such that uh, and that you have this estimate. So this is just to avoid uh, the exceptional set in the tautological inequality. And then you obtain the, this estimate. Okay, <coughs> and now you use a second time this trick of subharmonicity. So the fact that this function is also subharmonic. Right, so you obtain that uh, this is less than the average here okay and so you in implement that now will be almost done. So you obtain that uh, that this uh, integral that you can write uh, this is bigger than p s square okay so now you put everything together what you get is that you can bound uh, the first derivative <coughs> by the following quantity. Plus two gamma two. Okay, and this is smaller than uh, the maximum, in fact, of one and square root. Of e a square one minus this. Okay. So you see, uh, once you have uh, implemented the tautological inequality and this remark of subharmonicity you get quite easily a bound on the first derivative. Of course, this was made under uh, this assumption here. So now I will explain you uh, why we can, uh, uh, we can go to assume this. So in uh, 
still under the assumption that the, the special uh, loci is uh, empty. Let's prove this. So I recall you that uh, X Let's prove that it implies that there exists indeed such a case uh, <laughs> such that time. So this will be uh, uh, using uh, against uh, an argument of uh, Notarian induction. So, okay, so we are in the same. Uh, so we need to study somehow quite precisely the loci where the differential of tokay uh, is not injected. So we'll introduce this loci. So we define the following loci in the K jet. So it's uh, the points in uh, AK where, so you recall that in the inductive procedure of uh, the maize jet uh, bundle, you have at each stage uh, distribution VK. This makes the in induction work. So I, I take again the same notation that I recall yesterday. So you look at points where you have tangent vector in the intersection of VK and the relative uh, tangent bundle. Okay, you see, it's exactly the loci where uh, the differential of TK might not be uh, injected, right? So now you will study a bit the geometry of this loci. So, uh, okay, then we define them. the just the image of this. And uh, the observation that I will explain, not too difficult, is the following. That as you see, uh, the relative tangent bundle here, due to this splitting, you see that uh, it uh, it coincides with the tangent bundle of A, right? So in fact, everything here will be encoded by A. So the observation is just that, in fact, this is nothing else than uh, the this identifies with the projectivized tangent bundle, in fact, of A. And so you can see in all these jet spaces, uh, this particular uh, space. So I will explain you uh, maybe this uh, identification here. It's really easy. So. You, you can prove this uh, inductively. <laughs> so, uh, you consider uh, the projection between uh, two jet spaces, the successive jet spaces, and let near a point uh, where X 
belongs to AK minus one and V belongs to VK minus one at X. Because they not zero. So now you have the differential of the projection, which will go between tangent spaces. And uh, you have by definition that VK, as I recall yesterday, is nothing else <coughs> than this. Okay, this is the definition of VK, just the pullback of this line. So now you see that at every uh, stage, so at every stage, this differential induce of course, isomorphism, very easy. Between these spaces. So now, if you look at this intersection, what is it? it is just isomorphic to this. <coughs> and observe that uh, this is a rank one bundle. This is a line bundle. So this is why you will have an isomorphism between the spaces, which does not depend on K, right? So what does it mean, finally, that such a point belongs to AK0? It exactly means that X is in is here, and V belongs uh, to this. <coughs> AK minus one. K minus one. Okay. So this immediately gives you that this is just the projectivization of uh, this vector bundle here. restricted to A, K minus one. So you get uh, this uh, relation between A, K zero and the stage before, but as I've said, this is nothing else than a rank one bundle. So you see that in fact, this is A, K zero. Okay, so you go to the first stage and you immediately see that uh, this is nothing that it's. So this is why you have all these spaces that can <coughs> be seen not only in the one jet space, but in every k jet space. And in fact, it's the, another interpretation of this is kind of easy. How do you send element uh, of this in a higher jet space? You just, if you pick a vector, tangent vector, you can just consider the one parameter complex subgroup and you take the lift. And this will define this map, right? Simple observation, but now it has a very nice consequence. 
uh, yeah so now because we can see this is very nice because if you consider this sequence of algebraic loss subset you can all see them living in a fixed one okay and so you <laughs> have uh, they are closed subsets of this one right just by what i've said because this is this and now you have a, a sequence of decreasing algebraic plus subset so you consider the, the support of this okay so you have a descending uh, chain of uh, Jerry class subsets so by notarian property it stabilizes right? so there exists a new such that it stabilizes Okay, so now there are two possibilities. Either this is empty, right? If it's the empty set, it exactly means that uh, there is a new where the new is finite. So, first possibility, if for this new, uh, we have this, then uh, the new is fine. And so we are finished by what I did before. Now, suppose this is not the case. What does it mean? So, so let's take a point here. So this is a point on the abelian variety here. And an element Okay, but as we've said, this then is nothing else than a tangent vector to A, right? Because it lies in A nu zero. Okay. So you can then consider uh, the one parameter subgroup. B the one parameter subgroup. And you have to make it pass to this point, so you just translate it, right? And but now by the definition of new. New is the integer where this sequence stabilizes. What does it mean? It means that all k jet from new of this one parameter subgroup is tangent to xk, right? So by definition of new, in fact, you get that for every integer, the k lift at zero of this translated subgroup is equal uh, belongs to its k right but this just by Taylor ex expansion means that uh, it has to lie inside it 
So you see, it's very nice. I've produced an entire curve without using Brody, just by the geometry of jet space. <coughs> so now you just take as uh, before the Zariski closure. And uh, of course, this gives you a contradiction because I had supposed that the special loci was empty. Right? So contradiction. So I've shown you that indeed, uh, there must be a K where this two K is finite. And this proof, uh, you see, so it's a much more complicated proof than Grimm, of course. But it has the greatest advantage that it will be generalizable to the pseudo case. And this is uh, what Damian will explain. <coughs> so, uh, just a, a few words to say what will happen. Probably. I, I'm a bit in, a, but I was too long yesterday. So it's fine if I stop earlier today. Uh, just to tell you that, of course, uh, I think it's nice that I present, uh, wanted to present this in the, the simple case because you see all the ideas that would show up. Of course, when the special lo loci is not empty, it's much more complicated, but the idea is kind of the same. And what you will have to do is uh, somehow to kill all these direction where uh, it is not injective. And so the, the point is to see that not only you have one parameter subgroup inside, but there is somehow a fixed abelian variety to kill all this. And so in the end, you have to work not only in A, but also in a quotient of A by subabelian varieties. And then it, uh, it tells you that up to isogeny, you can think that you have to work in a product. And so you have to work in a relative setting. And so what Damian will explain you is that you have to do what all that I've explained you in the case of family. So all these uh, statements are not only for a fixed abelian variety, but for a family of abelian variety over S. And this is because of this point here that in the case where this is not empty, you have to quotient. Okay, so Damian will uh, explain that. Yeah, good. Okay.